Welcome to a special edition of our Facebook Live Town Hall Meetings. Uh, it's always a privilege and a pleasure to be here with you, representing our faculty, staff, and students. And I really have been looking forward to this day where we can introduce to our campus community the culmination of uh, almost nine months of work on our path forward in what we're calling CSU 2.0. But before I do that, I always start off by sharing a big thank you with all of you at Cleveland State, our faculty, staff, and students. We are over the halfway point now in our spring semester and our track record of keeping our campus safe and having a successful semester is intact. Our positivity rates are low. We're looking now at coming out of this pandemic and boy, has it been a good couple of weeks for Cleveland State University. And as I shared on my Twitter feed last night, it's a great time to be a Viking. Three things I wanna highlight that kind of set the table for our discussion today. Uh, first and foremost, our announcement, which is really the far, first large scale gathering that we're gonna have during this pandemic is gonna be commencement on May 15th at Progressive Field. Thanks to our partners, the Cleveland Indians, it's gonna be great. And I'm really, really looking forward to it. I've heard from so many students and faculty that are excited about getting together safely in a way that we can celebrate the ultimate achievement and that's graduating our students. And I have a special announcement. I'm gonna start with a special announcement today. We have a very special commencement speaker. No, it's not me, although I'll be one of them, but I'm really pleased to announce today that uh, our extremely uh, uh, honorable now Madam Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Marsha Fudge is going to be our commencement speaker on May 15th. How exciting is that? Our first Cleveland State graduate, uh, Cleveland Marshall College of Law to become a cabinet secretary. And she'll be here with us to celebrate. I think you'll find her story and her passion uh, inspiring, and we're just so proud to announce that today, uh, and we'll be getting that word out to the campus community shortly. So that's commencement. First great news that we shared a couple of weeks ago. The second is our mass vaccination clinic at Wallstein Arena, and uh, for those of you, many of you that have been there, and I've been down there more than a couple of times, and I've seen some of you getting your vaccines, and uh, I can only tell you that this is the ultimate example of a partnership between federal, state, local officials, uh, uh, staffs, and us. And it's been an incredible Knockwood success so, so far. We're close to our goal of 6,000 vaccinations a day. And I just want to thank all of the Cleveland State staff, our great pandemic response team that has done yeoman's work to make this work and to make sure that we are putting our best face on for our community. This is our mission. And for us to be front and center on something of this size, scope, scale is really incredible. And everyone from the governor on down has been so appreciative of what we've done and how we've supported our community. And now the trick is tell all of your friends and colleagues, please come down and sign up and get your vaccines. It's the fastest way, it's the best way that we're gonna get back to what we're calling our new normal. So we're a big part of it. I'm proud of what's happening at Wallstein. That was number two. And then to top it all off this spring, what a successful spring for our Cleveland State student athletes. Uh, our women's team just won their first postseason tournament ever playing uh, in, a, in a kind of a controlled environment in Kentucky. They won the women's uh, the WBI, uh, and it was good to see them celebrate. Everything came together, so congratulations to the women's team. We also have teams that are playing right now in the national championships, fencing, wrestling. Uh, it's been a great spring, and then there's men's basketball. And for us to be part of the NCAA tournament for the first time in, I believe, 12 years, uh, but this isn't just a sports story. It isn't. And none of our student athletes success on the field and on the court is a sports story. It's really a success uh, that all of us can claim because it starts in the classroom. 
And as a university president who represents you know, all of us, I am most proud of what those young men and women have done in the classroom. And we'll talk about that a little bit. And it starts there. It starts with culture and then uh, the success on the court. But we're really, really proud of what the men's team has done and how they're representing Cleveland State. Uh, and that is uh, very much a front door to the university. And as I've shared with you in many other talks, it's, uh, it's, it's our brand and we're representing it well. So three really great stories to start off uh, the last couple of weeks at Cleveland State, which brings us uh, to today. And this is the culmination, as I mentioned, of nine months worth of, worth of work that began back in December 2018, where we uh, issued a statement of strategic priorities. And I'll walk through some talking aids I have with you to kind of uh, explain where we are, a little bit about where we were, where we are, and where we're going as an institution. So it's a very, very exciting pathway forward. This is a product that was produced collectively. And we had a series of task forces. We've had the leadership team working on this for months. Everybody has a stake in our future, and that will continue. And if we're going to be successful, uh, we fully want all of you uh, to, and we need all of you to be committed and on board as we move forward. So with that, let me go ahead and use my speaking aids and go to the slides, if you would allow me. We're titling our, blu our blueprint, Emerging from Pandemic, a Blueprint for CSU 2.0. A little bit about where we were and where we are. So uh, when I arrived in mid-2018, we had some challenges, uh, a pretty significant structural budget deficit, and we have done really, really good work in advancing those seven strategic themes that we launched in December of 2018. And I look at the first bullet up on your, on your screen, we are now getting statewide and regional recognition as Cleveland's anchor public higher education institution. And how do we know this? The partnerships that are emerging, the way that we're working together with our city and our region to advance the number of students we educate, it's palpable. They know it in Columbus and you should all be very, very proud. What else we've built is a strong foundation for enrollment growth. And enrollment growth isn't just the students that are coming in the front door, although that's important. But I'm very, very proud of our first year retention rates, which are very difficult to move in total. And our rates are up 6% in the past two years. We're now at 76%. Just to give you a sense on how much progress that is, uh, there's a couple of land grant institutions in Ohio that have been in business for over 100 years, and their first year retention rates Highly residential campuses are around 80%. And you'll see that number again later in the presentation. A record number of spring enrollments this fall. Uh, in, in the middle of a pandemic, our graduate enrollments are up for the first time in nine years. And we are on financially stronger footing and we're beginning to reinvest in ourselves. We've significantly reduced a, an operating deficit, which is now less than 1% of our operating budget. We've, we've done this and there's been some pain in reducing uh, the cost of operating the university. And it's put us in a very strong position. Uh, for those of you financial folks out there, uh, we're measured across the state on something called a consolidated financial index. Ours is 4.2, which is fifth among the 14 publics in Ohio. And it's a sign of operating margins, liquidity and financial stability. And because of that, because of where we've come, this is the second consecutive year we're investing in ourselves with new faculty. Our core business here, and it always will be, is teaching students, doing leading edge research and training professionals for the workforce and for their future careers. And very, very proud of that. Next slide. I mentioned athletics, but it's really about the collective success of the student athletes and our academic progress report is the highest it's ever been. And those GPAs are real, uh, very impressive. Uh, and then the retention pieces 
Uh, and you'll see as we talk about CSU 2.0 and we talk about rolling up these seven priorities and we've, we've narrowed them to four, one of them is student success and engagement. And we're very, very proud of what we've done with our student coaching program for at-risk students and with our Parker Hannafin Living Learning Communities and uh, very, very proud of the folks that have helped lead those initiatives. And yes, we are getting a big investment from the state, $20 million from Jobs Ohio to invest in advancing the number of degrees, the number of students that graduate in 19 distinct undergraduate and master's programs. And then you've heard uh, over the past couple of years, the partnerships that we've developed. Our branding of CSU Global, which is now producing hundreds of students a year from overseas. Our partnerships, many of them with our community colleges and other universities. Uh, we've really been the lead anchor institution for Say Yes to Education and our numbers of students that we're getting from the Cleveland School District is up. And then of course, we've brought some major new donors to the table who are investing in us. So a good story and a good foundation. Next slide. And then the pandemic hit. And I can't say more about how we have responded as an institution to ensuring our students get as good an experience as possible in a very challenging situation. And I list some of the stats up there. I won't read the slide to you, but Right from the get go, when we partnered with our faculty on going to remote teaching and learning to our very, very student focused policies on pass fail and I've been getting many, many thank yous and thank you to the, to the SGA for their leadership here in promoting policies, the faculty delivered the policies, not us, the faculty led the changes to academic policy and that has enabled more students to stay connected. And I think we were more aggressive on the number of students that we've had on campus because of the way we looked at the data, because we were so thoughtful about making sure our folks are safe when they're on campus and our students are safe. We have one of the lowest on campus test positive, uh, positivity rates in the nation for an urban institution. So this is another credit to who we are and how we've responded. So now let me start to make the case for CSU 2.0. And it starts with our mission. And the mission is the value of a bachelor's and a master's and a PhD and the way that this transforms uh, 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 cycles of poverty and wealth disparities. This is a chart from the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics and what it does is it lists the median weekly earnings of those that graduate with uh, less than a high school diploma all the way up to a doctoral degree. And the key bar there is the difference between some college and no degree, $833 a week, and a bachelor's degree, $1,248 a week. This is why what we're doing and these advanced degrees are so important because yes, we're gonna do more certificate programs. Yes, there's opportunities for us to stack certificates and educate workforces, but nothing, even as you look at the data and I'll show you one more slide in the next 10 years is going to be as big a differentiator as a bachelor's and a master's and a professional degree. These are still the differentiators in the emerging workforce and it's what we do and it's what we do best. Next slide. And this is the other side of that. These are the jobs that are gonna be created over the next five years and the projected job growth for those jobs requiring a bachelor's, vice those that are sub baccalaureate. And it's about a three X difference. So our mission is so important to the future of the region, to the future of the country, and this is kind of the driving force. And I think we're well positioned at Cleveland State to fill this need and to pivot when we can to create the kinds of uh, graduates, which we've been doing, and more of them that can help address uh, the emerging market needs. So where must we go? It starts with our brand. 
You're all a part of that brand and we are going to expand it. We are gonna reach more students and produce more graduates. We're committed to it. We have a plan to do it. We need everyone pulling together on it, which we will get. And that's gonna require us to do some things, to recruit and retain more talent. It's always about the skill sets of the folks we have here among our faculty and staff. We need to shift our workforce to some degree and retrain folks when needed. We must reward our workforce. And we can only do that when we are meeting our mission and increasing the number of students that we serve. And then something that often gets overlooked and it shouldn't, we have to reimagine our service model, how we service ourselves. It's really about servicing ourselves and the frontline folks that are servicing our students. So this is where we will go with our roadmap and our blueprint for CSU 2.0, a transformed campus that will have 20,000 students by 2025. Yes, this is aspirational. We're in the range of about 16,500 to 17,000 students, but we have a plan to get there. The building blocks are in place. I'll talk about that in a little bit. We're gonna continue to grow and thrive as a research university. We hired our first two funded researchers this year. Very, very exciting work. And that kind of commitment is going to continue and expand because our students need that experience at an urban research institution. So we are going to grow our brand. And then we're going to market ourselves because the value of our education, not just because of the price, at any price, is something special and our graduates are successful. And it's about now, how do we get our brand out there regionally and nationally? This is an aspirational slide. And I wanted to give you some sense of where transformation could happen. Now, these are artistic uh, renderings, but that is Rhodes Tower on the left and on the right. And transformation is is a cumulative thing. It's about programs, but it's about our campus and we wanna draw folks in. And we'll be looking for public private partnerships to go ahead and expand our campus and come up with exciting concepts. Uh, our tower is an iconic tower uh, from the late sixties. And we're gonna look at opportunities to create the new CSU and, and transform our city landscape. The middle picture, which I think is a little hard to see is a Starbucks outside our student center. And then some other exciting options for our students uh, as we grow and expand. As I mentioned earlier, when we looked at CSU 2.0 and the blueprint, we took those seven themes from December of 2018 and we have built, we have reduced them to basically four. Uh, one is to continue to seek distinction as a leading public urban research university. I'll go through that. Very, very critical is that we differentiate ourselves even further on student success. And we've done some things that already have us down that road. The concept of us being an anchor institution and coupling it with becoming a beacon institution is something that you're gonna find through our plan is very, very critical. And I think we're well positioned to do this now, to be both advance our role as an anchor, but really start to become a beacon and draw talent faculty, staff, and students in from outside our region, because it's very, very important, not just to us, but to Northeast Ohio. And then theme four, build financial strength in our campus community and strengthen our campus community with the kinds of partnerships that we've already begun. So I'm going to walk through each of these themes with you, and I might add here now, as we start to get into some of the details, we are simultaneously and that means now releasing our blueprint document and it's titled Emerging from Pandemic, a blueprint for CSU 2.0 to our university community. So I'm going to present an overview of what's in the document and then you're all gonna get a chance to read it. And I know you're gonna find it uh, as thoughtful, well-reasoned and inspirational and aspirational as I did. And it is a document that was not produced by me or two people in the president's office. 
This is a culmination of our entire process over the last nine months or so. And you'll be hearing more about that as I talk about how we're going to roll it out to the campus community and engage the campus community on how we move forward together with it. So now let me walk through a couple of the details on each theme. First, how are we going to strengthen our faculty? We are going to hire 200 new faculty over the next five years. They'll be strategic hires. Uh, we're also going to walk the talk on diversity and inclusion in hiring. Uh, we've already begun to do that in our first round of faculty hires. Uh, we uh, are a diverse community. We'll continue to be a diverse community. Uh, and it's important that we provide career pathways uh, for junior faculty and also opportunities uh, for, for our staff. So it's a big part of our, uh, of our goal to distinguish ourselves. Then we're also going to invest in ourselves. Uh, right now, we're generating about $30 million annually in external research funding. And our goal is to increase that to $50 million. We'll do this through attracting new faculty investing money in and in resources and faculty startups, research labs and infrastructure. We already have one capital infrastructure project that's been approved and I'll show you a artist rendering of that in a minute. That's gonna create some new labs and ability to uh, advance our existing research. And then we're gonna create a new urban public health institute supported by a research investment fund to address challenges uh, in our community and to do this, we are going to bring several components of existing programs at Cleveland State together. To continue with strategic theme one, we are going to realign our colleges to reflect our strengths and help us present ourselves as a destination for students and faculty moving forward. This involves strengthening and focusing a distinct and dedicated college of health professions, including nursing, where we can build the kinds of partnerships and expand the existing partnerships with our healthcare partners and grow uh, a focused healthcare pathway to the kinds of jobs that are gonna drive growth in the next 10 years. We are going to invest and enhance our Levin College of Urban Affairs by adding social sciences and education there aren't any, any challenges in Cleveland that don't involve uh, social uh, uh, determinants of health, uh, that don't involve education and how we educate our young folks. And then with our policy ex expertise and expertise in the College of Urban Affairs, bringing these folks together, looking for ways to build uh, joint efforts approaching our nonprofits to invest in us. And we are very, very confident that they're excited about us bringing together these talents and focusing them in one college. That's the second piece. And then the third realignment is a newly configured College of Arts and Sciences. Colleges of Arts and Sciences at more than 85% of successful public research institutions are the driving force in the undergraduate experience in terms of core curriculum, in research, and in standing, in terms of us being a major player and a leading distinctive public research institution. We'll also enhance our College of Business and expand our honors program, and there'll be details on this in our blueprint. We're also committed to building world-class programs, health, engineering, business, programs in data analytics and science. And I'm in the middle of discussions now about another exciting partnership that's coming down the pipe. This is only gonna grow and we'll continue to invest in our existing research centers like our Center for Gene Regulation and Health and Disease as we build out our biomedical research. And then of course, uh, our city management and policy program in our Levin College, uh, investing in that finding ways to partner and pair the expertise we have there to go ahead and recruit more faculty and more students. Second thing, we really have done great work in differentiating, differentiating ourselves. Our engaged learning theme and our brand is real. It's not just a tagline. 
and you can see what our goals are going to be in first year persistence and six year graduation rates, those are aspirational and we're gonna get there together. And to do that, we have to create some things that currently don't exist. We have to streamline the way we advise students from the time that they even think about coming to Cleveland State all the way into their careers, and we're gonna do that. We're also gonna expand our residential campus, and our goal is to basically double the number of students we have on campus over the next five years, already talking about ways to do that. Of course, many of our students struggle financially, so investing in need-based aid, realigning our financial aid mix is going to be a priority, and then closing achievement gaps. And, and our first year rates would not be where they are today if we hadn't already started to make a dent in this. So all of these things are priorities. metropolitan area and this is something that's going to be really i think parents as well a one-stop shop for students to get that connectivity to jobs one thing i'll mention that's on the last uh, piece of that slide is uh, we also want to look at curricular review and updating our curriculum where it's needed where it's needed and to do that we're going to be working closely with our faculty leadership and our deans uh, to do that, because I do think there's an opportunity for us there. The more we uh, update and keep our programs relevant, the, the better it is for our students, the better it is for us. Theme three, strengthen our anchor mission and become a beacon institution. I mentioned the Jobs Ohio investment. We're also gonna build out our degree programs focused on uh, emerging workforce needs. You can see that listed on the slide. And we're gonna grow enrollments to 20,000 students. We have a plan for that, it's in the document. Uh, it's, it's a big ambitious goal, but we feel very, very confident through a number of various efforts internationally, locally, regionally, students that have stopped out, online students, and increased retention rates that we can get there and we will get there. And no one in higher education, at least in this region, is looking at post-pandemic, at the post-pandemic as an opportunity for us. And I, after discussions with all of our stakeholders, uh, I'm very, very confident that we're well positioned to do this. I'm very excited about this, this uh, uh, plan. And then of course, the public and private partnerships, which you've seen so many of, uh, are only gonna continue. And then the fourth theme, build financial strength. We have some work to do on the way we deliver services. We must evolve and we'll do that thoughtfully. We'll identify the kinds of partnerships that can come in and help us. As I mentioned to you earlier, our core business is educating students and doing leading edge research and searching for knowledge. And we, want to focus as many assets and resources as we can on those missions. Uh, one of the more ambitious pieces of our plan is to review and update the way we allocate resources inside our institution. So we incentivize folks to grow programs and we reward them for growing them in a way that advances our collective goals. Um, We'll, we'll go ahead and take a hard look at redesigning our campus. It, it, it's, it's a great campus, it's unique, it's a draw, and we'll, we, we are gonna look at ways to build it out through those partnerships. And then 
Uh, we're going to invest in ourselves as we redesign our financial model and we bring more students in. We'll reinvest in our faculty and our staff because because that's what we're here for. We're not a profit making institution. Everything we do is about investing in uh, our students, faculty and staff. And to do that, obviously, we're looking at a major capital campaign, uh, which will start in the coming years. So what's next? Well, today, as I mentioned, we are releasing uh, a document, which is the culmination of many months, many, many months of work. We've been very thoughtful about it. We know you're going to find it inspiring and encouraging, uh, and we'll do that today. There will be follow-up discussions after this town hall meeting with your VPs and your deans, and we are all joint stakeholders in this plan. This is not the president's plan. This is our plan, and that involves the faculty, the over 30 plus faculty that, that were engaged in the five task forces. It involves our faculty senate. And we'll be spending time with the faculty senate to walk and talk through this. We'll have a series of town hall meetings where folks will get to ask questions, so there'll be plenty of time for that. We'll have a new website that's launched, and it is our goal and our intent that we will Go, we will embark and start with an implementation plan uh, so that we can move forward on this path uh, fairly soon uh, after we have a period of time to get uh, the campus engaged and discuss and share our passion and the opportunity that we have in front of us. Uh, so what I think I will do to close this out, and I thank you for uh, your time today, is I'm going to go ahead and read you the conclusion of our document because I think it's powerful and it kind of wraps up nicely what we've I've tried to talk to you about today and kind of sets the tone for the future. And I'll editorialize, of course, but this is the, this is the summation that is in the document. Uh, accomplishing the goal summarized in the document will require change for all of us. But these changes will be in service of helping more students succeed, enhancing our productivity and research and knowledge creation, and increasing our contributions to Cleveland and the region. All of this is implicit in our aspiration to be one of the nation's leading public research universities. We have the talent on our faculty and staff to do this. We have a beautiful and well-located campus in the heart of Cleveland. The city itself is an ideal location for students to choose to come here in the coming years. That's where all the trends are, and we're gonna take advantage of it. Cleveland's an economic driver for the region and the state, and we're gonna draw not only from Ohio, but from the nation and the world because of the interesting things we're doing, because of the way we're going to create internships, co-ops, the kinds of degrees, the kinds of educational experiences that last a lifetime. And we have reason to believe in ourselves. At a time when many colleges and universities are struggling to survive the pandemic, we're emerging stronger than we were two years ago. Our fall enrollments are among the strongest in the state, uh, of fall 2020 enrollments, and our freshman applications this fall are up considerably. Our spring graduate enrollments were the highest ever. So all the signs are there. We're attracting state investment. And we've been asked to help lead one of the state's most important economic development initiatives. Our foundation is solid. We're continuing to hire faculty despite the pressures of the pandemic. Uh, so we launched this from a position of strength. And what we need now is you, each of you. And we're going to engage you both collectively and individually to gain your support, to get your thoughts, and bring you uh, together so that we can achieve the ambitious goals that we have at Cleveland State University. So thank you all very, very much for joining me this morning. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll have a chance, many chances in the coming weeks and month, month ahead to talk about the details of our roadmap. And I really look forward to engaging you on campus, hopefully in person. Uh, so until next time, thank you very, very much and go Vikings.